Sam, always great to be here at Island Fishing Tackle. Now, another twist it's to crazy. our bluefin tuna <laughs> season. And it seems so counterintuitive, but this new lure, I guess we'll call it a lure, right? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, There's a couple of caveats to that, but yeah. Okay, and it just seems to be working really well. There's a yeah. guy in the Royal Polaris right, right now. He just sent me a message and he said, Man, this thing is working so good. Phil, you got to do a report on it. So here we are, Sam. Yeah. What is it? Well, I mean, I'll preface it by saying that it seems like it's something that's working really well when the fish are biting really good. So part of it is you have to consider that. I don't think it's working better than other lures when the fishing's tough or better than other lures when the fishing's good. But when the fishing's really good, as it has been, I mean, it's almost impossible to leave. You know, now we're getting these reports of this big eye and, you know, there's other bluefin and Dorado everywhere like that. I mean, it doesn't seem like it's, it can get any better. But when it gets that good, I think that at times we can make other things work that maybe we didn't think about. So hey, this is just another way. Kind of like throwing the coffee cake on the Amigo <laughs> trip yeah. we had and the Dorado yeah. boiled on it and ate it. It's exactly like that. You know, I mean, to a degree, you can kind of at times, you know, like we used to joke before, you know, get them on a bare hook. I mean, this is damn near close to that. Yeah. All right. So what is it? What All are we right. talking about? So it's basically, it's a, it's a big sinker. And for us locally, we have torpedo sinkers that we normally use for rock cod fishing. This is a 16 ounce sinker. And what they've basically done with that is, you know, since with the bluefin fishing, you have to fish down deep and you have to get down to the fish. So our jigs that we normally use are going to be something that has a swimming action, but yet still gets down deep to where the fish are. And so this is just another way of getting a hook down there basically and like we were saying before when the fish are biting real good and they'll eat a bear hook damn near this is damn uh, you know pretty much as close as you get to that and so this is the rig that they're putting together and having some pretty good success with i mean this is no different than like a diamond jig or if you get one of those you know ahi assault diamond jigs or something like that i'm pretty sure it would work just the same but since a lot of guys maybe have a couple of big sinkers that you know they don't use on a trip or whatever and they want to dress it up and just catch something i don't want to call that a novelty but i'm kind of borderline thinking it's it's a bit of a novelty but you can't deny the fact that guys have caught fish on it you know, right and quite right. a few fish so but it, i mean it does beg the question and i think you've addressed it but it does beg the question do you really need these knife jigs and all these colors and all these you know when this is working and your answer to that is uh, these are working when it's pretty wide open. Yeah, yeah. And so on, on days where they're eating everything from a 200 gram to a 500 gram and whether it has red stripes or no stripes or doesn't glow or does glow. And, and I've been on those trips where as long as you get down to the zone, you're going to get a bite. And, and, and you, that still probably is the most important thing is making sure that you have some way of knowing where you're at. So either you mark your line or you get line that's already marked meter line. That's still probably the most important thing. As far as what you put down there, I don't think is as important. And, and, that, and that's kind of goes to show with the variety of lures that we have now, you know, guys using super long lures or, or flat fall jigs. And, and I've been looking at some of the pictures here lately. I see more guys catching fish on flat fall jigs than we have earlier in the season. I don't think that they're working better. I think I just think we're just kind of entered a new kind of a better biting period for this bluefin, which is crazy to believe because we've been catching limits all year, it seems like at times and, and it seems like now it's almost like even better which is which is crazy but i mean we're going to take advantage of that uh, the best we can so are you planning on selling these things or you're going to you're going to show people how to, yeah. to actually do it yeah is that what you, well, you can come in and buy all the components yeah there? i'm pretty sure we're going to make a few to sell <laughs> because not everybody has a crimper and not everybody has has the, the bigger stuff to uh, put the things together but as i'm going to show you here in a little bit as long as you have a crimper you, you, can, you can put it together pretty easily. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah. And, and you can come here to Island Fishing Tag and get all those components? Yeah, we have all, everything here. We have the assist hooks. Obviously, we have a ton of swivels. And if you do want to get one, we have the crimpers. I actually like this guy here. This is one from uh, Momoi. It's, uh, it's kind of a more compact one. It really only does to about maybe 300 pound. Um, so if you guys wanted to use it for doing like this kite rigs, it might be a little bit small. But um, since we're doing a lot of 200 pound, this one works really good and it's compacted to fit in your tackle box. And obviously the split ring plier, which we've been talking about all year, that's going to help you put a few of the pieces together. All right. All right. Sounds good. So one of the things we're going to talk about first is I was uh, asking you, Phil, if you had anybody mention it, but they put this safety line here kind of from the top to the bottom here. 
and I was kind of wondering about that. The only thing I could figure is that inside the torpedo sinker, you basically have this thing here, and that's inside there, which even cast it inside the torpedo sinker, it seems like it would hold just fine. In that but lead, right? In the lead. But I can imagine with this thing falling, hitting the deck, getting banged around, maybe it might work loose a, a, a pocket there that, that can slip out. So yeah. I've never actually seen one slip out myself, but I haven't ever tried to catch a 200-pound tuna with one either. So <laughs> That's true, right? Sure. I don't think anybody else has yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it's happened, but not intentionally for right, sure. Right, exactly. Yeah. So kind of the first step is kind of starting to put things together is you're going to use your split ring plier and put it right onto the swivel and then the other end we're going to put another one on a treble hook and is this as complicated well everything's complicated to me because i i can't figure out how to put gas in my car but <laughs> it's it's pretty easy i guess right for, yeah for most normal guys yeah yeah and the most basic thing is going to be doing th those two things right there. As you can see, you know, now they're connected from one end to the other. Yes. Now, um, some of the pictures I've seen were just with a treble hook alone, and, and I think that would work by itself. But of course, Southern California, if we can put more hooks on it, we will. <laughs> you know, So that'll be something that you could add on afterward. But we're just going to go ahead and, and put it together with the most basic way here. OK, perfect. And what I'm using here is a uh, Isoline 200 pound uh, leader material. It's what we've been using, and I think most shops have been using for all of the the leader rigs that they make for uh, for the flat falls and the yeah. knife jigs. So that's that's two hundred is adequate. Two hundred pounds seems to be the right size. It's it, it's what'll work real good. Well, actually, one more step here. Actually, we're gonna put these onto the onto the jig slash torpedo sinker itself. It is so crazy that this is working, you know, because yeah. you get it in your head that. That uh, I mean, that this is just way too basic. It's too plain. There's no color. There's none of that stuff. Yet they're working really well. Well, part of it too, I got to imagine there, there's a little bit of a component to social media. You know, these days it has to be, you know, guys are looking for a Mad Mac, and it has to be that color, that size, and they call around till they get it, and when they get it, it feels like they've gotten a brand new pair of Michael Jordans or something. Yeah, right. For and on the other end of the spectrum, it's like just something you have in your tackle box laying around. So it's kind of crazy to think of how both of those things will have the same type of, of uh, impact to people's psyche, you know, but, you know, I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm not a, a psychologist. I'm not a psychologist. So <laughs> all we can do is base it on what guys have been coming in asking us for. And so we try to provide them as much information as possible. So now you're doing the safety line? The safety line, line yeah. Yeah. You think that's important? It obviously is because they're all doing it, right? Right, right. I well, see that on the Royal Polaris and other guys are all doing that. So right. better safe than sorry on better a big Better safe fish. than sorry, yeah. Yep. And actually, I'm going to show you something on the sinker here that I just noticed that maybe that's the reason. You know, sometimes when these things are casted, you'll see right here. Oh, that's yeah. Part of that. Let's look at that. Yeah, so that's just part of that that uh, grommet here that is is it didn't it, make it into the casting. Yeah, and that so. could conceivably pull up, pull loose, right? Yeah, yeah, or yeah, it, it can get that. knocked away or something like that, you know. And does the shape of the sinker have you noticed or heard? Does it make a difference? Well, it, it does seem like we've been seeing a lot of those bell shaped sinkers uh, be what you see mm -hmm. in the in the pictures quite a bit. I did talk to the captain of one of the uh, long range boats, uh, Alex from the Royal Star, and I asked him specifically about that. I'm saying, you know, I see, I see most of what you guys are posting is with that other sinker. Is that something that is necessary? Is there a reason that you guys, he said, no, that just happens to be what we had available, but we rigged some with regular torpedo sinkers like this and they work just as good. Oh, okay, okay, so that doesn't seem to make a difference. Yeah, as far as what he told me, yeah, it yeah. didn't make a difference. So Alex is a local guy that's just kind of brand new on the Royal Star now, huh? Yeah, he's definitely not new to long range industry. fishing. Yeah. yeah, he's he was running the Apollo for a number of years, doing really, really well. In fact, he's developed quite a following. And uh, he's partnered up with the guys on the Royal Star, and he's part of that team is one of the new owners. Yeah. And he's done really well. I know that the guys that uh, come off the boat really like him, his service, and his, the way he runs the boat. But that's pretty much it right there. All right, so we got our safety line, and yeah. then. 
where do we go from here? That's it. Tie it on your rod. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Do you put? How about any assist hooks? Yeah. Do, you do that. It seems like once again, you know, with Southern California, if we can put more hooks on it, we do. Yeah. And that's. Do you what think I, that's wise or necessary? I don't think it hurts you. I'm not sure how much it helps you. Yeah. But it definitely does not going to hurt you. Man, that's down. fast, Sam. That's pretty much it. Yeah. After that, you're just going to add a uh, right to the top here. How many assist hooks? <laughs> I don't know, but ten, <laughs> 10 of them on there. <laughs> I think one would work just fine, but like anything else, uh, I think guys sometimes want to be symmetrical and they'll put one on each side of the split ring. Yeah. But uh, I think one would be fine. I think, I think you'd be ready to go just like that. Beautiful. Yeah, All it's right. pretty simple. Very simple. So, and 200 pound is, you wouldn't go to 300 pound or any more than that. Uh, you don't think Once it's again, I don't think it hurts you. Yeah. Um, I, I do think that 200 pounds seems to be plenty good enough, but it doesn't seem like uh, it's, it needs to be any heavier. So the big question is, when you go on your next trip <laughs> and you're fishing at night, what are you going to fish with? Are you going to try this or are you going to stick with... Uh, uh, I mean, like I said, it, to me, it's kind of more of a novelty. I, I don't really think it's, it's what I have to use to get bit. I don't think it's something that that is is going to make it so that if you didn't have one of these you didn't catch a fish but eh, it's just fun to catch them it's like fishing you know anything you know when you fish iron you just want to catch one on 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 a certain iron or something like that but in in this case i think uh i think i might do it just just to say you did it but i, I don't think it's absolutely necessary and in pure economic terms guys out there saying hey i want to save some money man those knife jigs are expensive What's this going to cost? Components and everything. If you had to take um, a guess, you're probably around 25, 30 bucks. Oh, like that. you're pretty close to the same thing. Yeah, you know, like I say it's still a novelty thing. I think because you have to have a crimper and you have to use a, 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 a an expensive treble hook as well. You can't just put your yeah. That looks you, like a beefy. Treble, yeah, you man. can't use a treble hook that you got off of your you know uh, service iron. You're not going to take that off of there and put it on here. So. It, it might be a little cheaper, but but because you still have to carry your knife jigs, because there's still going to be occasions where they're not biting wide open. All it is is going to add a little bit of cost, but you know, on a day where you just maybe, maybe you forgot your knife jigs at home. I don't know. This might be a solution for a guy who, who just doesn't want to buy any. I guess maybe that might be something. But I can't see really going on an overnight trip or a day, day and a half, or two day trip right now and and not carrying some knife jigs. I'm looking at those things and saying, man, those would work for rock eye. <laughs> I'm sure they would. Yeah, I'd like to rock eye. I'm sure they would. I, I'm sure they would. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sam, always learn something when we come into Island Fishing Tackle. Why don't you uh, tell everybody your address there and how they can come visit you. When are you open? Yeah, we're uh, at 21809 Avalon Boulevard in Carson. We're open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6. All right, Sam, thanks again for your time. Appreciate it. All right, Phil.